Hi guys, we're going to read the Odyssey, the land of the dead. We're going to be reading it in two parts. If you'd like to follow along, you're going to open up your PDF, which is either linked on the lesson plans. You can directly click the lesson plan link that gets you to the PDF. It's going to be for Thursday and it's going to take you straight to the PDF and it's going to look like this. Or you can open up your set of questions and follow along with me as we read. That will also help you. So I'll explain some things. You can jot down the answers. The link to the PDF is right here. Well, let's do a little bit of a recap, shall we? If you see on your screen right now a big ugly brute, well, you are looking at Polyphemus the Cyclops, right? The other day during our Google Meet meeting, I showed you that I have a small figurine of Polyphemus. He looks brutish. He doesn't look very smart, but what he does look is powerful and strong. Where we left off was that Odysseus had been trapped in Polyphemus's cave. He wasn't going to be able to get out. Polyphemus had already snatched up some of Odysseus's men and ate them whole. But Odysseus knew that if he were to take his sword and kill Polyphemus right then, he and his men would die because they'd be trapped forever. That large round stone was in front of the cave door. Remember that? So he waits until Polyphemus is fast asleep after he's gotten him drunk on a little bit of wine. And he and his men take a large sharpened lance that they made out of a huge tree trunk and they run forward and they stab Polyphemus in the eye and they blind him. That makes Polyphemus so angry. He opens up the cave door and he thinks that the men are going to come rushing out, but they don't. They wait it out and they're able to use another trick. Odysseus realizes that the fluffy rams that are inside of the cave he can tie his men underneath the bellies of the rams and then the next morning they can go underneath the belly of the ram and then they can escape. But let's not forget a very, very important part of this section of the Odyssey. This is where it all happens, folks. Right there in your picture when you see Polyphemus so angry that he's grabbing the top of a mountain to throw towards Odysseus's ship, sink the ships and kill the men, Odysseus gets away. But on his way, he screams out something really dumb and he says, hey, Cyclops, if anybody ever asks who blinded you, who tricked you, well, be sure to tell them it was me, Odysseus, son of Laertes, whose home is on Ithaca. I mean, basically, guys, as I said before, this is like a thief who's robbing a bank and then he leaves his driver's license on the counter. Here's my name. Here's my address. Here's how you get a hold of me. So this makes Polyphemus so angry that what he does is he screams out toward his father. And we all know that his father is Poseidon. And he says, Father, I need your help in getting revenge against Odysseus. First of all, he doesn't want him to make it home. But he says, if his fate is to make it home, let it be far, far into the future and let him have undergone many horrible things and let him come home under a strange sail. So he has cursed Odysseus. This we all need to know before we read the land of the dead. Now, before we read the land of the dead, this, this version of the Odyssey that you guys have on your PDF, I absolutely love it. It does, however, cut out some very important things in the Odyssey. For example, when Odysseus stays with Circe for a whole year, she's a goddess that's kind of drugged him, but it's going to kind of shortcut or shorten in the italics that you see on your screen and tell you what happened after he left Polyphemus and after he got away, a few bad things happened. And then he ends up in the land of the dead. Now, if you were to read this on your own, I would highly recommend before you get to college that you pick up a, a, um, 
kind of a graphic novel of the Odyssey. I'll put this closer to the screen so you guys can see what it looks like. The images are absolutely incredible. Um, they're very, very detailed. It follows the story exactly. And I really recommend this one. This one is by Gareth Hines. And you can order that through Barnes & Noble or Amazon. And it's really actually a lot of fun to read. So there you go. I recommend it. Or when you get to college, you can just read the big fat paper version of it. You know, whatever floats your boat. I like the graphic novel. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. Again, we're going to break this up into two parts. So have your questions ready so we can answer them. Here's what happens after he leaves Polyphemus. Odysseus and, and his men sail to Aeolia. And this is where Aeolius, he's the king of the winds. He sends Odysseus on his way, but he gives them, Odysseus, a great big sack. And it contains all of the winds except for the favorable west wind. However, when Odysseus gets this big bag of winds, his men are kind of looking because they, they don't know what's in this bag, okay? And they're like, what could be in this bag? Of course, they all think it's gold. And they all think, we're sailors. We all have to share and share alike. We deserve this gold. So while Odysseus is absolutely exhausted, he falls asleep. And whether it is fate or whatever it is, or his sailors just acting badly, they open the sack and they let loose whoosh, this huge storm that drives them all the way back to Aeolia. Well, when King Aeolius sees them, he casts them out and he says, clearly you have been cursed and the gods do not like you. You've been detested. So he washes his hands free of Odysseus and his men and he makes them get out of there. Well, Odysseus and his men leave and then they sail for seven more days and they arrive at an island of cannibals. This is the land of the last Dragonians. And all of these creatures attack the ships. Odysseus isn't just on one ship. Remember, he's got other ships. And they attack the ships. They kill the men and they eat the men. And they have destroyed all of Odysseus's ships except the one that he's sailing in. Things are not good, right? So Odysseus and his reduced crew escape and they reach Aea. And this is an island that's ruled by the sorceress, the goddess Circe. I've mentioned her before, but she has a powerful spell that she uses over Odysseus that makes him believe that he's in love with Circe and he loses track of time. Not only that, but she drugs Odysseus's men and turns them into part human, part pigs. The movie is absolutely fantastic. I wish we were together to watch it, but it really has some great special effects to show how they were part pig and part men. Um, but he does not turn into a pig and she thinks there's something special about him. And that is because he is protected by a magic herb. And Odysseus then demands that Circe change his men back into their human form. But um, before Odysseus departs from the island a year later, Circe says that in order for him to reach his home, he's going to have to go to the land of the dead. And he's going to have to see this blind soothseer, this prophet named Tiresias. Now, while Odysseus is in the land of the dead, I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview. He not only runs into someone that he knows that was on his ship that was one of his sailors, but he also runs into someone that he loves very, very much from back home. It's a woman. It's not his wife, Penelope, but it's someone that he loves very much. So let's begin the land of the dead. We bore down on the ship at the sea's edge and launched her on the salt immortal sea, stepping our mast and our spar in the black ship embarked the ram and you and went aboard in tears with bitter and sore dread upon us. I had to pause for just a second. They have a ram and a you so they can make, Odysseus can make a sacrifice. Remember when you want to sacrifice to the gods and get something you want, you sacrifice animals. You can either cut their throats and let the blood pour out where you also burn the choicest bits, the fattiest, meatiest bits, and it's like a sacrifice you give to the gods. You can 
get what you want. And it, but it says, now a breeze came up for us astern, a canvas bellying land breeze. Hail shipmate sent by the singing nymph with the sun bright hair. Ha. So we made fast the braces, took our thwarts, and let the wind and steersmen work the ship with full sail spread all day above our coursing. So they're making good time until the sun dipped and all the ways grew dark upon the fathomless unresting sea. By night, our ship onward, um, our ship ran onward toward the ocean's born. In other words, toward the very edge of the ocean, the realm and region of men, the men of winter, hidden in mist and cloud, Never the flaming eye of Helios lights on those men at morning when he climbs the sky of stars. So he's coming to the land of the dead. This is a picture. I'll pause here. We'll come back to it. This is Odysseus who's kind of shielding his eyes and looking down into a pit of blood. And in the background, there are ghosts. There are dead men. And it says, nor in descending earthward out of heaven, ruinous night being rove over those wretches. So what does that mean? It is dark and it is night all of the time for these dead people. And I think that's how we all picture hell, right? We don't picture hell as being bright and sunny. So we made the land and we put the ram and the ewe ashore. So Odysseus has both of those animals. And we took our way along the ocean stream to find the place foretold to, for us by Circe, where Paramedes and Eurylochus pinioned the sacred beast. With my drawn blade, I spaded up the votive pit, and I poured libations around it to the unnumbered dead, sweet milk and honey, and then sweet wine, and last clear water. And I scattered barley down, and then I addressed the blurred and the breathless dead. So that part might be confusing, but what they have done is they have sacrificed the animals They've poured the blood into a pit and it shows it in this picture here, right? You see, he has his sword drawn. And if you look in the background, there are the dead. And this is the pit where the blood was spilled. He also puts in some other things, libations. That means some wine and some honey and some milk and some barley. And that's the sacrifice he's giving to the dead. And then it says, then I addressed the blurred and breathless dead, vowing to slaughter my best heifer for them before she calved at home in Ithaca, and I would burn the choice bits on the altar fire. As for Tiresias, I swore to sacrifice a black lamb, handsomest of our flock, thus to assuage the nations of the dead. I pledged these rites. And then I slashed the lamb and the ewe. Oh, so that's where he kills them and he pours the blood out, letting their black blood stream into the well pit. And now the souls gathered, stirring out of Erebus. And if you look here, the definition of Erebus is the dark region under the earth through which the dead pass before entering the realm of Hades. So here come all these dead people. And when they come, they are exactly as they were when they died. So it says brides and young men and men grown old in pain and tender girls whose hearts were new to grief. You know, maybe they died in heartache and many were there too, torn by brazen lance heads. So he's talking about soldiers that were killed, battle slain, bearing still their bloody gear. So all their armor. From every side they came and they sought the pit with wrestling cries. And I grew sick with fear, but presently I gave to command to my officers to flay those sheep, the bronze cut down and make burnt offerings of flesh to the gods below, to sovereign death and to pale Persephone. So he's giving the death gods their, their sacrifice. Meanwhile, I crouched with my drawn sword to keep the surging phantoms from the bloody pit until I should know the presence of Tiresias. Now that's where we will stop and then we will read the rest of it in another section.